Hello, uh, thanks for attending my talk. Today, I will introduce DeepSniper, a DM model extraction framework based on learning architecture hints. Deep learning systems are widely adopted in many application scenarios, such as supercomputers, data centers, smartphones, and uh, embedded devices, covering many important uh, application domains, such as computer vision, natural language processing, autonomous driving, and uh, drug design, etc. The deep learning techniques are likely to be overwhelmingly beneficial for humanity, but we also believe that it's worth giving serious thought to potential challenges and risks. For example, the adversary may manipulate the data at the, the bot model to output malicious results. For example, the fake news bots may control the public opinions. The autonomous driving systems may be hacked by the adversary, resulting in uh, car accidents or malicious robots in the movie character, but may possibly come true in the future. Therefore, Deep learning security issue is becoming increasingly important nowadays. In this work, we focus on a fundamental one, model extraction attack. On the such an attack model, the adversary aims to explore the internal characteristics of the black box DNA model, including the network architecture parameters, hyperparameters, or even the training sets. Such an attack is able to turn the black box model attack to gray box attack and can boost the attack successful rate of many other attacks, such as adversary attack, adversary patch, and uh, membership attack. There are some algorithm level work being proposed to conduct model extraction. The basic idea is to learn the decision boundary based on the inputs and output queries. However, algorithm level work are too slow and too weak for practical use. For example, this work has been proposed to do the model extraction uh, for the seven layer neural network model with trained topology and it needs 30 GPU days to achieve this kind of attack. Such, simple, such a simple DNA model are barely used in practical cases. Our work proposes a systematic approach which can identify a very deep neural network with complex topology in 10 milliseconds. This work shows that leveraging the architecture information during execution, Deep Sniper makes it a practical problem and urges the system and architecture robustness design. So first, I will introduce the attack model in the demonstrator cases in our work. To note, it can be also extended to other attack cases. The attack model is the, that the adversary can physically access to the, um, to the victim platform to obtain architecture hints. Such a model is practical because of the commonly used deployment strategy. We train a model in the cloud and then deploy this model to the edge devices. If we can physically access one device and uh, to do the model extraction, then we can attack all the other devices because all of them share the same model. So we targeted uh, uh, at the GPU platforms which have great impact on the deep learning eco ecosystems. The architecture hints we leverage here uh, is, uh, is the bus events across the, the PCIe and the GDR5 buses, including both the memory traces and the kernel execution latency. The basic attack goal is to obtain the uh, computational graph by learning the architecture hints. So let's, let us have a look at the uh, system stack of the uh, DNA system. It consists of uh, algorithm, deep learning framework, the hardware prep primitives and hardware platform. The computational graph of the model is transformed to a runtime layer sequence and then transformed to runtime kernel sequence. And finally, the kernels are executed on, on the hardware platforms and the adversary can monitor the architecture hints. It's very challenging to uh, 
to, it's very challenging to achieve the goal of reversing the uh, computational graph based on the architecture hints because of the existence of both the architecture and the system noises. So first, most of the uh, memory requests are filtered in the complex memory hierarchy in the GPU platform. Hence, we can only obtain very small proportion of complete memory traces here. And the second reason is that uh, the, the runtime dynamics bring the system noises into the architecture hints. Here is an example. Uh, this figure shows the transformations uh, from the runtime layer sequence to runtime kernel sequence of the VGG. The blue bars here uh, represents the implementations of the convolution layers. So you can see along the, ta along the time, uh, even for the same I mean, uh, convolutional uh, layer operators, they have different uh, uh, implementations. So for the first one, the convolution layer launches two kernels, and for the second one, it launches seven kernels. So the intrinsic reason is that the Kudian library may select the different uh, hardware parameters, for example, the Winograd, FFT, or gene-based implementations during the runtime. Therefore, it's even hard to identify the layer boundary, not to mention the detail of the layer type. We also observed opportunity in the system stack. Although there are runtime dynamics, the scheduling methodology of the framework is simple and static. For example, this is the computational graph of the uh, inception segments. There are four branches uh, with eight uh, layer operators. We observe that the layer operators will be executed one branch by another. Such phenomenon is observed in both PyTorch and the TensorFlow framework. Therefore, we have chance to learn the relation between the layer and the kernel transformations. Based on the observations, we propose the deep sniper for model extraction based on learning the architecture hints. The deep sniper first identify uh, the runtime layer sequence based on architecture hints, and then reconstruct the layer topologies and in the sub-step, conduct uh, the dimension size estimation. We take the runtime layer sequence identification as a fundamental step, which learns the transformations through the system stack. In the contrary, previous work tried to estimate the dimension sizes of every layer. And then, based on the dimension sizes, they try to predict the layer types and the layer topologies. They take the dimension size prediction as a more important step and try to infer the relation between the architecture hints at the dimension sizes. In fact, as introduced in the previous slides, it's even hard to identify the layer boundary, not to mention to understand the, the relation between the dimension sizes and the architecture hints. Such methodology only work for very limited cases with some assumptions based on specific designs. For example, the reverse NN is based on an accelerator, which uh, assumes that uh, it can obtain full memory traces of weight and feature map data. And cache telepathy assumes that uh, the only gene-based implementation are used for the convolutional layer. So in the first step, the dimension sizes are not, cannot be accurately estimated so they can only obtain the dimension spaces. Based on these spaces, we need to infer the, the topology and the layer sequence. Therefore, we cannot obtain an exact network architecture, but just a reduced uh, search spaces. However, in the deep sniper, we can provide the exact network architecture prediction with reduced dimension spaces. So in summary, we envision that the layer sequence prediction is much more important and robust to the dimension size prediction. In the first step, I will introduce how does the deep sniper identify the runtime layer sequence. The key idea is to map the runtime layer sequence problem to a speech recognition problem, because both of them involves two correlation model here, 
for speech renovation, there's an acoustic model to correlate the relation between the acoustic signal vectors and the phonetic units in the words. Additionally, there is a sequence model to consider the language information because when we are talking, there are contexts to let the content make sense, right? Layer sequence prediction has the similar process, which also involves two models here. The kernel model to correlate the relationship between the aperture hints vectors and the kernel probability. The aperture hints include the kernel execution latency, the read volume, the write volume, the kernel dependency de distance. Additionally, we also have the context model because when we are designing the neural networks, we have some uh, basic, uh, basic uh, design rules here. For example, we have the basic uh, block consists of one linear layer, have or have no batch normalization or done sampling with bling, and then uh, ended with, uh, with a nonlinear layer, for example, the ReLU. The block can be connected sequentially or with uh, complex topologies by the add operator or the contact operator. Such design philosophy truly exists not only in the state-of-art uh, DM models, but also adopted in the network architecture search, which is the important research direction to find out the new excellent DM architectures. In this way, these two problems are similar like each other. Therefore, we use the speech recognition techniques to solve the layer sequence prediction problem. Here's a simplified uh, example of the, of the layer sequence prediction. In this study, we consider seven important layer operator uh, types here. The convolution layer, uh, fully connected layer, batch normalization, ReLU, pooling, add, and contact. Notice that it can be extended if we have new layer type. Along the time, every kernel has its probability distribution. For example, the first one, it has the highest probability as a convolution layer. Then for the second layer, third layer, and so on. Therefore, there are many possible uh, sequence candidates here. Then the CPC decoder uh, does the in search to find out the sequence with the largest possibility, which is this one. Obviously, the sequence with uh, the largest uh, kernel probability is not a good answer because the sequence is not making sense here. So in this case, we can understand that we, if we only predict the layer sequence by the single kernel level, it's not sufficient. And this, uh, the context information is quite important for the sequence prediction. The second step is to reconstruct the layer topology. When a layer reads the data that's being written by the previous layer, there's an interconnection between these two layers. Therefore, we leverage read after write access pattern to identify the layer topology. Such an idea is based on the following observations that owning activation data are modified and read back again, and uh, the weight and the input image data are, are read only and we are not activate this kind of access behavior. To note, we have no need to get the complete memory uh, request to identify such behavior, which is robust to the architecture noises. The third step is to estimate the dimension sizes. We first characterized the cache misrate in the GPU platform. For most the DM models, ReLU kernels have a stable high uh, cache miss rate, surpassing 98% for most cases, as shown in the orange dots uh, here. Hence, the read volume of the ReLU layers is almost the same as the input feature size of it. Since the ReLU layer is almost a standard layer in every basic block, the feature map sizes of the layers in the victim model can be estimated by broadcasting the ReLU size to their adjacency uh, layers. Then in the second step, we just do the math to estimate the dimension space according to the feature map sizes. To note, we neither assure nor aim to obtain the precise dimension parameters since they do not significantly affect the attack transferability. 
this is an example for model extraction. The victim model is ResNet-18. During the first step, running at the runtime uh, layer sequence identification, the, the deep, deep sniper accurately predicts the layer sequence with the small errors in the red color. In the, in the next step, we reconstruct the layer topology according to the memory class behavior. Then we predict the feature map sizes according to the read volume of the red room operation. In the dimension estimation, we randomly select the four dimension sets from the potential dimension space, which satisfy the layer size and the, the constraints, which are different from the victim uh, ResNet 18. And we will show that even with these kind of uh, extracted architectures, we can obtain quite good uh, attack success rates. Now I will introduce the experiment uh, evaluation. To train the deep sniper, we need first generate the training data. The, the training data is first step is to build the random computational graphs uh, by randomly generating the sequence and randomly generating the dimension size of them. And uh, um, we put these computational graphs on the GPU platforms and we profile them to obtain the, uh, the architecture hints. Based on this obtained, uh, uh, based on this obtained uh, uh, data, we can conduct the deep sniper uh, layer identifier training. We evaluated the layer sequence prediction accuracy with the metric of label error rate. It is commonly used in a sequence to sequence problem, which is calculated based on the editable distance between the ground truth sequence and the predicted sequence. The example is to show that the detailed comparison of prediction of uh, ResNet-18, which has a label error rate of 3.2%, uh, you can have a sense that about the label error rate and the difference between the uh, ground truth and the predicted uh, sequences. Here, we only miss the one batch normalization and uh, uh, we additional put uh, we put an additional ReLU uh, layer here. We also attest the prediction accuracy of the other networks uh, for even very deep neural network ResNet ResNet uh, one five two. The prediction accuracy is very good uh, with low error rates. We also conduct the stress test on NASNet, which has very complex topology and uh, hundreds of layers. The prediction accuracy is not bad. We also validate the importance of the context information. We compare the single layer identifier and the context where identifier that being used in Deep Sniper. On average, there's a large gap between the prediction accuracy uh, between them, and the such gap will become significantly larger when we are confronting with very deep and much more complex neural networks. Therefore, it means that it's essential to take the context into consideration. Our instructed extraction our extracted architecture is quite sim similar to the black box model, but there are still subtle differences from the victim one. Therefore, we validate the effectiveness of the extracted neural network in an end to end adversary attack. With the extracted model, we conducted the adversary attack. The difference from the baselines is that in our work, we use the extracted network architecture from Deep Sniper. While the baselines, since they know nothing about the victim model, they will randomly pick the subsequent models in the model zoo, compared to the baselines that use the VGG, BestNet, ResNet, and mixed families. Uh, the, the deep sniper provided the, uh, the extracted architectures and can increase, improve the successful rate to 75% which is considerably high since the top one prediction accuracy of ResNet is just about 70%. We also compared cases that use randomly selected substitute models. On average, the tax of rate of them is about 20%. So in this experiment, we demonstrate that the extracted model architecture can boost the tax of rate 
and make the attack a real issue in practical cases, even though we do not have the precise dimension, dimension information. So in summary, our work proposed a robust and general and powerful model extraction framework. Although previous work uh, provided initial attempts to extract the DNA model extra information, however, our work outstands in terms of robustness, generality, and uh, powerfulness. So the takeaway of this work is first, Representation rep uh, transformations through the deep learning stack are learnable for predicting network architecture. Taking the context information into consideration makes the model extraction much more powerful. And third, the network architecture is essential for targeted attack, even without the precise dimension si sizes and width parameters. So this is the end of our talk. And I will be pleased to answer your questions. If you are interested, please contact me at, or refer to the GitHub link um, if you want to have a try on DeepSniper. Thank you.